We begin with President Biden asking Congress for billions to help Ukraine fight off Russian aggression. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin blames the White House for funding a proxy war, and he's renewing threats of using nuclear weapons. CBN's Brody Carter has a look at this political tit for tat in our top story. <laughs> Ukraine has become an epicenter of unbearable heartache and pain as Russians maintain their all-out assault on multiple fronts. Fires in rubbled buildings riddle the landscape of Kyiv after Russian bombs rocked Ukraine's capital once again. Sprawling violence left several people killed or wounded in Mariupol as the Russians push on in several cities. The worst of crimes is war itself. The fresh bombardment of Kyiv happened as the U.N. Secretary General was touring the country's devastation outside the capital. Here at home, the president promising more action. We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains. President Biden hopes to sell the wealth of Russian oligarchs to help Ukraine in its war with Russia. He's also asking Congress for $33 billion for military, economic, and humanitarian aid. The cost of this fight uh, is not cheap. But caving to aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. As America seeks to strain Russian power, fears are growing that Russia's war on Ukraine could spread beyond the border, either by crossing into NATO countries or through cyber warfare. They've already cut off gas and oil to Bulgaria and Poland. President Putin pointed to the size and power of his nuclear arsenal Wednesday. Putin's renewed threats come after accusing the U.S. of leading a proxy war against Russia, supplying weapons to Ukraine to weaken Russia's military. We're not attacking Russia. We're helping Ukraine defend itself against Russian aggression. U.S. intel has credible information reporting one of the darkest chapters of this war. Russian forces executing Ukrainian civilians who were trying to surrender near Donetsk. And the bodies of women and girls showed signs of torture and sexual violence. Other barbarities include the destruction of Mission Eurasia last month. The missionary headquarters near Kyiv was destroyed by Russian tanks while trying to help Ukrainian refugees flee the war. The nonprofit said after the Russians destroyed their building, Russian troops threw any remaining stockpiles of Bibles and Christian books from our warehouse on the ground and burned them. The war has now claimed the life of an American, 22-year-old Willie Joseph Cancel, who died fighting with Ukrainian forces. He leaves behind his wife and young son. All of this as the constant Russian attacks have driven more and more Ukrainians out of their own country. Brody Carter, CBN News. Our senior international correspondent, George Thomas, joins us now from Ukraine. So, George, I know you've been spending time with a prominent pastor from Mariupol. What is he telling you yeah. about the situation in yeah, his city? Pastor Gennady Mokneko is very famous in Mariupol. He is the father of 37 adopted children. He has three biological children. He runs one of Ukraine's largest homes for street kids. And this week, he was told by sources inside Mariupol that his center, the Pilgrim Center, has been taken over by Russian forces, that his home has been commandeered by Russian forces, as well as homes of other pastors. What he has been doing in the last 60 plus days is that he's sending people into Mariupol, individual people with their cars to try and get people out. Keep in mind, Ephraim, they have to go through maybe 20, 25 Russian checkpoints, and there's no guarantee that they'll get there alive. And if they do get there alive, there's no guarantee that they'll come out alive with the uh, with those who are trapped so horrific situation going on today in mariupol you're also reporting on uh mission eurasia's work in ukraine and the countries of the former soviet <laughs> union how are they handling the devastation uh and the loss to operations in uh Irpine? yeah uh, cbn has had a long relationship with mission eurasia it's hor horrible what they've uh, experienced in their, their the total destruction of their building in the Erpin. Uh, but you know what the good news is that they are continuing to do work. They're doing humanitarian work on the Polish border in Moldova, uh, as well as in Ukraine. And get this, there is a huge demand for Bibles. And so Mission Eurasia has been printing tens of thousands of copies of the New Testament, as well as the Book of Psalms, and distributing this al along with their care package. So even though they've lost uh, air, or their building, their premises, their headquarters, they continue to do the great work that they are known for here in Ukraine and in the former Soviet Union. George, NATO is saying this war could drag on for years. Are Ukrainians ready for that? 
Uh, look, I think they're just taking this day by day. Look, there is some. There, uh, the Ukrainians have have uh, had some setbacks this week. It's not been a good week for the Ukrainians in Kharkiv, part of Kharkiv. The Russians say they have uh, they have gained control as well as in Kherson. And there is some reporting that they're continuing to get uh, gain villages to take over villages in the east. So it's going to be a long slog. Uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Indeed it is. George Thomas reporting for us from Ukraine. Thank you so much, George. Continue to You're welcome. Uh, stay safe. Much appreciated.